Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I have a special video for you today. Uh, it is a Thursday afternoon, late evening. I just got off work. I've shown up here at Bayou Bandit to do a quick practice round for the Bayou Bandit uh, showdown. I forget what it's called, but H-Town Disc Golf is gonna hold it. I'm gonna play it this uh, Saturday morning. It's a two round event. So with that said, I'm gonna keep it uh, relatively brief. Let's go. Since this is a practice round, I'm not gonna score. This is also gonna be one take everything. Um, and I'm probably gonna throw multiple shots, but I've got about an hour's worth of daylight left, maybe a little bit more. So I'm hoping I can get as many holes in as possible, but I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get the entire course. All right. And I'm actually trying to experiment with my new throwing form but I've had a hard time instituting it actually out on the course, even though I can do drills with it. So I'm going to do a standstill. There we go. That's a lot more like it. Okay, and to be honest, I'm out testing to see if I can use my new form as something useful in this tournament, at least for upshots, if not the whole thing. And uh, I'm hoping at least to do pretty good at this tournament. So I'd actually swore off playing in two round tournaments. Um, you know, the ones where you play two rounds in a day or a multi-day for this year. But I was willing to make an exception for this tournament because I uh, love this course. It's my favorite 18 hole course. And so I couldn't pass up this opportunity to play this. Okay, I've got this TL. I like that, but this new form makes it really hard for me to get the throws that I want. That was too much hyzer. All right, and I put my drink on this disc. I'm just playing for par on this. And that's a tap in. All right, and so the good news is I have a good idea of what to do on this course as far as what discs to use off the tee and what to use for upshots most of the time. Just very familiar with this course. All right, so while I'm waiting for this couple to go through, just uh, I want to update you on one of the things I have been working on off camera and at the house without using a disc or, you know, as a no disc drill or as a shadow swing. I've obviously been doing Blitz DGs, you know, Swirly Bird, but I've also been doing some other things, just trying to get my body to understand what it needs to do. Because I know how to stop rounding, but I still have this habit where I keep shrugging bringing this up and bringing this down this vertical shoulder collapse so horizontal collapse i can basically solve but i still have this issue where when i throw i want to have the elbow down here and up here so my body has spent six years throwing incorrectly doing that essentially and so training it to not do that has been really challenging so i'm going to go ahead and throw this hawkeye Let's see if I can do so with the form I'm envisioning. <clears throat> that would be yes. All right, so actually what my play is, is to use my TL or my T-Bird uh, because I want to take that route and have it fade a little bit stronger. But because my throws have been lower power, weaker with this new form because I haven't drilled it in, I've had to go with slightly less stable or more understable discs and they just fade earlier because I haven't been able to put the force into the disc. Force production is low. I knew that was there but the only way to get to the basket was to try to avoid it and I couldn't. So to be honest this is still a proof of concept. Can I actually throw with my newer form in an actual tournament and not have it make me suffer? So far, it's not bad yet, but it's undecided so far. And actually, I already know what discs I wanna throw off every tee. I'm trying to see if I throw this way, if I can still use those discs or if I have to switch to something else. So anyways, par four, gotta go across the street and I'm gonna take this leopard. I'm gonna see if I can keep it inbounds. <clears throat> had a mosquito on my ear while I was 
throwing, but I didn't want to stop because I felt like I was going to get a good throw in, and sure enough, I did. That was perfect. And just to be honest, all the times that I've been playing early on when I tried to institute this form when I was playing, it was just disastrous in terms of score, and I was getting upset all the time. So in the last month or so, if you've seen me actually play in these videos that I'm doing, it's been with the old form because it's the only thing that works consistently, even though it's bad form and it's not, I'm not terribly good with it. For me to not be super frustrated, I have to revert to old form. But today, new form, if at all possible. <clears throat> and I can tell it's breaking down, which is good, because normally I can't tell if I have bad form. Now I can tell. And the thing I want to point out is, a lot of these holes, I'm not trying to play for birdie, I'm just trying to play for par, like this one here. If I can get it close enough, that's all I want. So a hole like this, I'm playing for par, for example. Hole one, I'm playing for a birdie, but two and three and four, I'm playing for par. And this is the second hole that I can possibly birdie, so that's my play here, but I'm okay with the par. Uh, there's out of bounds, about 25 feet past this basket, so I don't want to go too long because the comebacker is uh, not easy. There we go. That's my rock three. Man, I, that's the thing. I put in a lot more effort than I normally do with my old form, but with this new form, it's just I don't have the ability to put a lot of force in it, so that maybe went 200 feet when it should go about 230. So yeah, normally I get a little bit closer, but you know, this is what I gotta deal with. That sucks. This is the downside of hurrying when I have to do a practice round. All right, here's my exodus. And I have considered trying to use my old, my new form and just do standstill only because I can get greater accuracy that way. But I am trying to actually merge the two because ultimately I wanna play disc off with my new form. So let's just see what happens here. <clears throat> Put hyzer on it. All right, let's stand still with my Hawkeye. Just try to throw flat. Again, with good form, but not messing with the timing, timing of a cross step. I just don't have the coordination down. Everything is crazy with this new form. All right, so my standstill throw with better form actually did better, so I'm gonna go with this. So I may just have to do standstill on this tournament. Let me try this. This is what I should have thrown, and I threw it as if I was throwing that. See, it's more stable. That's exactly what I should have done. So this practice round, and I'll be watching, of course, while I edit, and then in post, and I'll finalize my decisions for the tournament. Okay, so for those of you who have played Bayou Bandit before, up until now, this has been a valid tee pad for this hole, but recently in the last month or two when they revamped the course, this has now become the new tee pad, but it's still the same basket and the same hole. I'm gonna try to take this tee bird and just see what I can do with it. Incoming, <laughs> hopefully not. <clears throat> ah, two inside, but that's not bad. Eh, I can make par. Okay, so unfortunately for me, Put myself in a bad spot. This is another birdieable hole by me, provided that I throw off the tee well. But as such, I'll take a par. And if I ever get enough practice with good form, I think I'll actually be able to do a lot better here. All right, sorry to stick you here, pointing directly to the sunlight, but uh, this is the new tee location for eight. The old one used to be there. Uh, so this is another recent change. <clears throat> That's my T-Bird again, and that is mission accomplished, even though I clearly had form breakdown. All right, time for a forehand approach with my pig. All right, that'll work. Okay, well, this is pleasantly surprising. I'll take it. Okay, we've arrived at the next hole, and you see that basket way down there? Well, we've got a dozen or more trees between us and that, 
and this is where the T-pad is. Now there used to be a decent route with the backhand going that way and fading, but for some reason it's, it's not gotten any better. Whereas this has opened up for a forehand, so guess what I'm gonna try. Okay, so my play is to take an overstable fairway driver like a Banshee or a T-Bird and just try to use my forehand to get it out there. And because I'm using forehand, I'm playing this for a par, but birdie is possible. I've birdied this before with a forehand. That's not gonna happen there. Let's see if I can correct with my T-Bird, because I'm here to learn. God knows I don't throw forehand enough. Okay, that's good, but I would have liked to have traded those two because that T-Bird's a lot less stable. Last but not least, let's try this Exodus. Should be a touch less stable than a normal T-Bird. About as stable as, oh man, did I do that wrong or what? I did that wrong. So I need to just forehand, forehand, and just see if I, how that goes. Oh yeah, next to the basket. Okay, that said, I'll take a par. All right, unfortunately the sun is directly ahead, so I have to move the camera that way so it's not affected. But on blind is F. I've been informed by the people in front of me I can go ahead and throw, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to get a shot out. I literally can't see where I'm going. Uh, that was terrible. Okay, unfortunately it went in the grass over there, but I can't frame the camera where you can see anything, so I'm gonna arbitrarily place a lie here just so I can get through this hole there we go. I'm always playing this hole in particular for a four because of the length and the accuracy required. All right, so that was a bad upshot on my part, but let's see if I can put this in the basket. Nope, I had a yip getting a four. Okay, we've made it to the next hole and I'm gonna take some humility here, give myself some grace and realize I'm in suboptimal conditions to practice. So I'm just gonna throw a standstill shot with my leopard. <clears throat> That's what I want. Okay, I've got a putt. All right, well, the good news is, is I know how to play this course, so I pretty much know what to do. And it'd be nice to make some putts. Okay, so let's recap. I'm through 12 holes and I've missed literally every birdie opportunity, either a bad putt or a bad throw off the tee. Kind of depressing. So I'm gonna go to standstill mode and just see what I can do with my current form and just see if I can get some sort of a decent throw with standstill. Well, I can, but I have to basically grip lock. Apparently, this is why I haven't been playing with my new form. I just can't do it. See, why am I throwing it that far and that late? Try again, let's try with the Exodus. See if I can correct. There we go, that's a little bit more like what I want, so. Alrighty, all right, so here's what we've got. Hopefully I'm in camera frame. Just gonna throw a disc this way. Nope, that's what I wanted. Did I put too much power on it? Just barely. Okay, that's pretty impressive. I managed to go long and put myself in a position where I can't make a putt. So this is a four, unfortunately. Okay, so this is one of the more challenging holes at a, you know, for someone that's backhand dominant and at my level, a rec level, per, you know, thrower. Birdie is almost impossible for someone like me. I've only birdied it once and I was super lucky gonna do another standstill this time with my leopard just to get it across that's across okay 93 feet to the basket per bush nail this is not the best spot I really was hoping on getting closer all right so unfortunately for me this has turned into a rushed disc golf round So not only am I having a terrible practice round because I'm trying new form, uh, I'm not having fun. <laughs> so I'm basically done. I'm just gonna try to throw with my form and see what happens. I'm not, it's not like I'm scoring this round.
All right, let's see if I can get close to the basket. That's a putt. All right, let's just try to make this. Okay, we've made it to hole 15. This is another one that play, starts out playing in the street. This is all out of bounds. When you're playing casually, this is in bounds, that is in bounds, the basket's over there. How the tournament runs, I don't know if these are gonna be river OB or if that's gonna be OB and beyond. I'll find out Saturday. There we go. Finally, I had a throw that looked and felt good. I've got a putt. Okay, so honestly, in the tournament, I'm probably gonna lay this up because I just don't think, I mean, I know I can make it, but if I'm on in the tournament, I will run it. If I'm feeling off or I wanna play conservative, I'm literally just gonna lay it up under there and tap in a par, so. Okay, I'm feeling better about myself for getting the first birdie of the day. So I've actually, my best score at Bayou Bandit is three under. I've gotten three under a couple times, two under, two or three times. So I know I have the potential to perform well here, but the way my form is right now, um, I do not think I'm gonna put in some good scores. So do stand still with my TL. <clears throat> See, that felt good. And by the way, this is a birdie opportunity as well. Okay, so I made it within about 25 feet of the basket. So this is another birdie opportunity provided that I can get a disc close enough to the basket. Okay, why am I back on? I don't know. Mysteries of disc golf. Okay, the interesting thing about this hole, hole 17, is the basket is way down there. I know you can't see it on the camera, but we're gonna tee off here. There's two plays, one a forehand or backhand turnover play through the gap, but the wider, more open play is a hyzer that way. Okay, so I'm gonna take my Exodus here. It's a touch less stable than the T-Bird, and since I'm doing standstill, I'm just gonna try to use what good form I can and throw it that way. <clears throat> that, my friends, is what I want. Ooh, it's in the fairway. Okay, so for me, this is unfortunately way too far away for a, a birdie pot, so I'm just gonna try to get this close to the basket so I can tap in with a par. That'll work. Okay, now just to putt and get out of this hole. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the group of people in front of me to finish out the last hole here, I just wanna let you know, so I am gonna play this tournament. Um, the good news is, number one, I will not be rushed. I'm not stressed out when I play tournaments. I don't ha have a lot of emotion when I play. So I'm usually pretty even killed when I, even keeled when I am uh, playing in one. Uh, the good news for me is, number, is you know, number one, I'm not gonna be nervous or in a rush. Number two, I won't be recording, uh, but I wanted to put this video out on a Friday morning so that others who want to play this course but who haven't played it in a while can kind of see what it looks like. Um, and this is gonna be from a rec level perspective. I'm gonna play MA4, I'm 818 rated at this moment. And at this rate, it looks like I'll be lucky to make even on any of those two rounds, but I do think I can outperform plus two, which is where I'm at now. And I think I have the potential to go three under once or twice. So I'm gonna learn from my experience in the first round, see how I play, make adjustments, and then I will just play loose and carefree in the second round based on what I've learned in the first. That said, I hear them putting out. Let me get set up so I can throw. Okay, so I'm gonna throw this T-Bird, not using correct form, I'm just gonna throw how I'd normally throw, and then I'm gonna do standstill with good form with my exits to see how that goes. So I just wanna see how this plays out. <clears throat> see, that's my old form. It's been screwed up because of this new form. You know, I built a bad groove of a swing in my normal play and I, I've learned how to, to move more freely with this new form, but I haven't built a new groove. So everything is just wild and uncontrolled, more than I'm used to. So that's led to a lot of frustration off camera, which is why you haven't seen me do any form work videos or anything like that or other practice rounds. 
<clears throat> that was better, but I can tell I did the vertical collapse. Okay, I'm about 120 feet out per bush now. All I want to do is get close to the basket. And indeed, I did. Yes, sir. Tap in. All right, guys, that's going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and cash out here, and I'll wrap up in just a moment. Okay, guys, that's going to do it. I'm so sorry for this rushed uh, practice round. I've been planning to do this all week. I actually paid to join this tournament a week ago. Sean hasn't yet decided if he's going to do it. He hasn't enrolled yet, but I'm going to play. And uh, that's why I wanted to do this round. I just unfortunately wasn't able to get free from work early enough, and so I had to rush. But I have done a practice round previously last week with Sean, and I developed a good idea of what I wanted to throw anyways. And so, yeah, I'm going to learn from this experience, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, crazy round. And I'll let you guys know how I did in the tournament in uh, probably the next video. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.